Okay, I gotta do this one too. This is another BabylonBee.com satire on Christianity, specifically against Peggy. Almighty scrambles to throw together apocalypse before the next blood moon. Because Hagee's doing what the Bible says you can't do. Hagee's trying to date the rapture. Okay? And he's basing it on blood moons. Now here's what a blood moon looks like. It has to do with the difference between the atmosphere when you're looking at the moon. Makes it look like it's the moon. The moon will turn to the blood. Okay? So that's what Hagee's basing all his stuff on. So here's the satire. Heaven. God, the sovereign lord of the heavens and the earth, issues an apology Wednesday for failing to smite the created order with fire and brimstone during the recent blood moon cluster, but promises he's pulling out all the stops to make sure that doomsday will be primed and ready by the next lunar tetrad. Due to lack of resources, the apocalyptic season has been once again postponed, the press release said. All our departments were stretched thin, dealing with crises in the Middle East, Donald Trump's campaign, and the rise of various rank heresies within the church. The document went on to reassure constituents that the end of all things is still at hand. Pending the next bizarre astronomical coincidence, we are working around the clock to make sure we don't miss the next big set of blood moons coming up in, I believe, 2032. You can count on it this time. At press time, pastor and self-proclaimed prophecy expert John Hagee was reportedly preparing a revised and expanded edition of his bestseller, Four Blood Moons, to account for the new information in the Almighty's announcement. You see why that's so funny? Now, I want to show you something, okay? I'm going to turn this up a little bit, see? Scrambles the next blood moon, and we're going to roll this down a little bit. And here we got 2032. The Bible tells you what's going to happen in 2032. Right here. Okay, this is where it starts. And you use the cumulative syllables here, plus 30, to get the AD number. Okay, so the only question is whether we count the syllables right. So far, it's been really fitting for actual history. Because I've been testing it with actual history now. I've been working on it with Anonominon for some months. So far it's working out really accurately. You know, because if, you know, the, the Bible self, um, what do you want to call it, self-auditing. Uh, if you get it wrong, then it shows up. Like here I got the pronunciation wrong. So in one of the, in version 4 of this thing, I had to fix the syllable counts. And that's telling you where I had to fix syllable counts because I had a typo. All right. So now let's come down to 2032. 2032. See, here's, here's 2031, but that's really 2061. 2032 is just after this. It would actually be Hoss, be that syllable. See, because you had 30. So 2011 is 2031. So the next, a blood moon. It's supposed to be a horse, a horse there. Except that, now, what does that tell you? Okay, well, what that tells you is that by 2041, that's actually 2041, I'm sorry. Okay, wait a minute, there's 2036, there's 2030. Oh, I'm sorry. With apologies to Gilbert. Um, t t I'm sorry, 2030, okay, it's Amen, Amen, that's 2032, Amen, that's an anaphora in Hebrew, and it's, it, I mean, in, in, in Greek, and it's designed to um, benchmark significant periods in history, to circle them around them, to show cause and effect, and this is basically showing the effect of the Reformation here. Because 1532 is 1562, and this is the centerpiece of this prophecy is the English Reformation from 1570 to 1640, which is a big surprise to me that it would be so stressed. 
still doing research to find out why it was so important, that one. Amen. That's 2032, see, 2032, 2032, 2032, up here. Well, there it is. It was already in prophecy, and you don't even need a blood moon. Amen. Believe it. It's actually transliterated Hebrew. And it's part of an anaphora. So, yeah, 2032 is important. But it's not because of any stupid blood moon. Christ is telling you year by year what history is going to be like. Right now, we're all saying, Kitty, everybody all over the world is looking for a Savior, Lord, and trying to get in. See, because that's Matthew 25, 11. And it says, and later on, coming back, the remaining virgins said, Lord, Lord, open to us. Yeah, but he doesn't. And answering them, he said, in other words, they have to wait for seven years before he says anything. And when he finally speaks, 2032, believe it, it's usually translated truly in the English Bible. It's not a good translation. Believe it when I tell you, and then here's our kicker, 2041, I don't know you. That's what he's going to be saying to our boy Hagee, if he's still alive. Because Hagee's writing all this false doctrine. How come a brain out knows this and Hagee doesn't know? Huh? That's a slap in the face, because I'm just a female. Females aren't teachers, you know. But they can be and should be witnesses, and they can be and should be cognizant, a real cognizant of the Bible. Okay, well, here's your proof. What I know and don't know, but more importantly, here's the scripture itself. 2030. Answering them, he said, so in 2030, there's going to be an answer from God to the apostate foolish virgins who are clamoring to get into politics. And God's letting them stew now and grow now and... Hopefully wake up in time. And then sooner or later he's going to lower the boom. And answering them he said. So yeah it's going to be an apocalypse. By 2032. It's going to be apocalypse against the Christians. Who lie against the word of God. I come to think of it that's not so funny. 